Hey, what's going on everybody? Dustin here, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna go over the Mint budgeting app and why this is the best free budgeting app out on the market. This includes how to set up your account, what they offer, and how this can help your financial situation, and so much more. Now, in a quick nutshell, Mint just does so many different things, from showing you your spending breakdown, creating and tracking your budgets, tracking your net worth, showing you your credit score, letting you set goals, and a lot of other things. Mint is really more than just a budgeting app. Now, before I go any further, I just wanna let you know this video is not sponsored by Mint in any way, shape, or form. But Mint, if you're watching, feel free to reach out to me. But as I have told you plenty of times before, understanding where your money is going is very important so you can make better financial decisions, and those better decisions can help you reach your financial goals. Now, getting started with Mint is very easy. You can just go over to the Mint website and sign up for an account. And from here, you're gonna enter in your email address and a password. And if you want, you can add a phone number as well for two-factor authentication. I do recommend this because it just better protects you. Now, when initially setting up your account with Mint, I do recommend using the desktop version. The mobile app is great and it's super easy to use, but I have found the desktop version to be easier when setting up your account. But you can choose to use the mobile app if you want to. It's completely capable of handling setting up your account. It might just take you a little bit more time. Now, after you create your account, you're gonna be taken to the home screen. And on the left-hand side of the home page, you're gonna see your account sections. Mint has sections for your bank accounts, credit cards, your loans like auto, mortgage, or student loans, your investment accounts. You can even add in your properties. And you'll need to log into all of your accounts so that Mint can see your transaction data so they can properly put them into your budget and track your expenses accordingly. And the more accounts that you link, the better financial picture Mint is able to see, which is going to help you. And if by chance you have a loan and Mint doesn't have the ability to log into that account, Mint does give you the ability to track that bill manually so it's not forgotten about. Now, if you do decide to track it manually, you will need to update this account yourself though. Now, Mint is also secure, so you should have no concerns about logging into your accounts when using Mint to track your finances. Also, when you log into your account, you may notice some accounts have generic names like credit cards. You can actually change these names to say what you want so you can know which credit card or which account that might be. You also have the option to hide accounts if you don't want it to be part of your accounts that Mint is tracking. Maybe it's one of your kids' accounts or a business account that you don't want to be seen with your personal expenses. You can exclude it if you want to. Then when it comes to property values, if you have a mortgage, you're gonna have that under your loan section, but since your house does have value, Mint will also track the value of your house. And Mint does use Zillow to track your home value. And this is gonna be more of an estimate since the estimated value of your home is gonna vary depending on which website that you check. And if you have a car, you can actually enter that in as well. Because even though a car is a depreciating asset, it still has value. And since Mint will track these for you, it'll automatically adjust the value as those values change, making the process of tracking your assets and liabilities much easier for you. And when you link all of your accounts, this will let Mint more accurately calculate your net worth as well, and that is going to change over time. Now, if you're enjoying this video, then give this video a like. It does help others find the channel, and it's a free way to support the channel as well. Now, once you log into all of your accounts, Mint is going to show you all the transactions that you've made. And this is extremely helpful if you're someone like myself who uses multiple credit cards or accounts for your purchases. And this will also help when it comes to tracking your spending as well. Now, while it's great to have your transactions tracked, Mint does not always categorize them properly. So you do want to pay attention because while Mint does a pretty good job at this, it's not 100% accurate. I'm not sure if it's due to the information they get from the bank or the transaction itself, but if that does happen, you can actually change the category of your purchase manually so it tracks correctly. And Mint also allows people to set up rules for their purchases. So if a transaction is the same each and every month, you can make a rule to categorize it in a certain way. This way it reduces any incorrect categorizations for your budget. For example, HelloFresh has not been coding as grocery for me. It's been coming up as a miscellaneous expense. 
but I can set up a rule so that HelloFresh is marked as a grocery purchase each and every time, which is what I want it to be. But categorizing your transactions will help when it comes to setting up budgets because it's gonna properly track your expenses. And if you have a category not listed, Mint will actually allow you to add your own categories as well so you can track it. Then beyond just the categories, you can also tag your transactions. And these tags will group together transactions so you can find multiple transactions when looking at multiple categories. So Mint allows more customization here so you can get the most out of this, which is actually quite nice and pretty impressive for a free app. Then having goals is always a good thing and Mint has preset goals that you can choose from like saving for a vacation or setting up for retirement or you can even make your own custom goals. And depending on the goal you want, you just need to enter the information so that Mint can track it. So let's say for example, we wanted to take a trip to Paris for a week and it was an adventure trip just for seven days. You would need to enter in the amount of money for each section you think that you're going to need. Then you can choose the account Mint needs to track to monitor your progress. Then you can even set a planned date in your monthly contribution so you can make that goal happen. And you can set multiple goals at once for Mint to track as well. And seeing your progress towards hitting your goals can be a great motivator as well. Then knowing your credit score can be extremely helpful for so many different reasons from getting better rates for a mortgage, an auto loan, or maybe even a new rewards credit card. And having a great credit score is an important part of your financial picture. But if you don't know what your credit score is, then you don't know what you need to do to fix it or keep doing what you're doing to keep it at a great score. And Mint does use your TransUnion Vantage score for telling you your credit score. And while this is helpful, the Vantage score doesn't always equal your FICO score. So I would consider this more of an estimate than a completely accurate number. So there could be some variance in your numbers here depending on what credit score an institution is using to calculate your credit score. But from my own personal experience, it's usually been within about 10 points. But I've seen some people mention some very large differences. So just know it's an estimate, but it can still be very helpful for you. And to sign up for this, you do need to enter in your information and your full social security number. And this will not affect your credit score and Mint also lets you know that as well. Then I'm sure you have monthly bills like credit cards, internet, cell phone, utilities, and plenty of others. And Mint will actually track these bills for you. And you can add these bills in separately as well. So for example, I have Verizon for my cell phone carrier and I can log into my Verizon account and Mint will track this for me. And Mint is really good about notifying you when a new bill is due so that you can make sure that you aren't missing any payments. Then one feature I really like is that Mint will track your monthly subscriptions as well. So you can see how much per month you're paying for your monthly subscriptions. Because sometimes we really don't think of the $8 here and the $5 there expenses. But if we have a lot of these little expenses, they can really add up. So by seeing this, it really shows you how much you're spending on these subscriptions and that way you can make the decision to cut a subscription that you're maybe not using anymore. Then we get to the budgets, which might be one of the biggest reasons you want to use this app. And Mint makes it pretty easy to use and understand because Mint will let you create a budget however you want with as many categories as you want. But you just need to select create a budget, then you can select your categories or even create your own and you can set up the categories to be done monthly, every few months, or even just once. And with the monthly option, Mint will allow you to roll over unused money to the following month if you wanted to. So if you had a budget of $200 for dining out and you only spent $150 in that month, the next month you could have $250 if you wanted to. You don't have to use that feature, but it's there if you wanted to use it. And if you have a variable monthly expense, then using the every few months option was gonna offer you more flexibility. So for example, if you spend $1,000 every three months on gas, that means you could spend $300 one month, $200 the next, and $500 in the last month, and you're still going to be on budget. You also have the option to hide accounts from your budget. This will help keep certain accounts you don't wanna be tracked from affecting your budget tracker. And Mint color codes your spending as well. Green is good, yellow means you're getting close to your budget, and red means you went over on that particular category. 
then you can also go back and look at previous months with your budget tracker. So if you see you're going over in a particular category every month, you can look to see why and how you can adjust it. And to adjust it, it's very simple. You just need to select edit details and change your budgeted amount. And everything you don't have set up in a budget, it's gonna fall under everything else. So while you may not have given those purchases a selected category, Mint will still categorize them when you expand this out so you can see their breakdown. Then we have trends, and I really enjoyed the trends section because it does a really good job showing you your history and, well, trends. From your spending, to your income, to even your net worth, you can go through so many different sections to view. This includes looking at sections over the course of time, or by type, or even by different accounts. And by looking at the trends, it's gonna give you a better idea of your patterns and your progress. This way you can look for ways to make adjustments where you need to. So studying this every so often, it can be helpful because this is really gonna tell you a more complete story of your finances instead of just looking at the monthly chapters. So we went over setting up your account and once you do that, you can pretty much manage and make adjustments right from their mobile app. And you can also add accounts if you want to or even create a budget or even edit your budget from the app. And the mobile app is very easy to use and has a great interface, although I wish there was a dark mode for it. And right as you open the mobile app, you're going to see your net worth. And when you scroll over, you're gonna to get to see your monthly spending. Although you can turn the graph off if you wanted to. And at the very top left, you're going to see your credit score if you've signed up for it. And when you click it, it's gonna show you your stats and how each section affects your overall credit. And the mobile app does a great job separating all of your sections like your cash and credit cards or investments so you can quickly see your totals. And when you select a particular category, it's going to expand, and it's gonna give you more details of that section. And if you notice a transaction is categorized either incorrectly or maybe you wanna change it, you can just click it and change the category right then and there. Then when you select the This Month's tab, this will bring you to your budget, it'll show you your upcoming bills, you can see your cash flow, create and see your goals, and it'll even show you your spending categories as well. And this tab is fantastic to really see a bulk of your important information all in one place. And you could absolutely use the mobile app for pretty much everything, including setting up your account. One thing I've noticed you can't do on the mobile app that you would need to do from the website is add properties. I'm not sure why you can't connect them here, but that really seems to be the big thing you can't do from the app, but it would be a great addition. Then with the marketplace, it shows you different products that you may find useful like credit cards or different investing platform. And these ads are how Mint makes their money. Some of these products won't be helpful at all to you while others might be. Now the amount of features that Mint offers customers is outstanding and it's even better that this app is free. But being free does mean that you will see some ads. Now I don't think that's a big deal. and I think this is a fair trade off for what Mint offers. Although you can actually get rid of the ads for 99 cents a month, I don't think it's worth doing, but it is an option if the ads really bother you. Now, some people might be unsure about giving their personal data to men, but they are secure and they're also owned by Intuit. So if you're someone who uses TurboTax for your taxes, this is the same company that owns them as well. But when looking for an app that offers a lot of automation for your finances, I am really hard pressed to find a better app than men. And I have used and tried a lot of different finance apps over the years, but Mint just makes it so easy for people. From adding accounts, to tracking your net worth and your investments, to even letting you know what subscriptions you have. There are just so many tools offered to help you make better informed decisions about your finances. And since much of this is automated, this is going to save you a lot of time compared to using spreadsheets or other manual tracking methods. So let me know, what do you use to track your finances? Now, if you're someone trying to automate your investments and considering using a robo-advisor, then be sure to check out this video right here where I compare some of the best robo-advisors and help you decide which one is the best one to use. And if you know someone who would find this video useful and helpful, consider sharing it with them. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.